There's a market for this somewhere. I know it. Here I am, sitting here silently, reading a book. But then! Oh. I thought for sure something and or James would interrupt my- STUPID uh? DISCIPLE! Ah! Uh, Medusa heads! Uh, uh, shit! Ah! Uh. Ah, huh, Andy, you made it through that uh. special nostalgia portal. Is that what that was for? And who is this? Uh. That's a waiter skeleton uh. from the Dominus Collection. Why won't he die? He's a cowardly enemy that runs away when you find him. He also throws food at you. Beef Wellington and potatoes au gratin. Why doesn't he serve- th Why don't you serve this? He doesn't speak, he just yells and runs. That's endearing. Stop it! Now that he's gone, let's talk about the Dominus Collection and finish your shirt. My near decade-long dream of being able to play three of my favorite games on the planet on the Nintendo Switch has finally been realized. Wait, three? You only threw Order of Ecclesia in our Games That Made Us thing we did for all of May, which you can watch all of right here. So when did the other two reach that status? Oh, we'll get to that. First, what is Castlevania The Dominus Collection? It's a collection of the Castlevania games that were released on the Nintendo DS. Dawn of Sorrow, Portrait of Ruin, and Order of Ecclesia. Dawn of Sorrow follows the continued story of the next in line to assume the role of the Dark Lord, Soma Cruz, and his quest to not take that mantle. But when a mysterious witch and her cult take residence in Dracula's long-abandoned castle and goad Soma and company into chasing them, he, well, gives chase, all in an attempt to stop the resurrection of Dracula and prevent anyone from becoming the Dark Lord. Portrait of Ruin stars two interchangeable protagonists. Jonathan Morris and Charlotte Allen are guided to, surprise surprise, Dracula's castle to chase down a vampire by the name of Brawner. It's a really stupid name. Along the way, a story I once assumed was terrible becomes refreshing, dynamic, and interesting. Our heroes must brave the castle, several paintings that become areas to explore, and more in order to prevent the resurrection of Dracula. Finally, Order of Ecclesia. You'll follow the adventure of Shinoa and the Order of Ecclesia, which is a mysterious cult designed to fight Dracula and prevent his resurrection. Shinoa can absorb something called glyphs, which allow her to repurpose weapons formed of them, much like Soma, only these are her main fighting tools. Due to unforeseen complications, she loses her memories and emotions and must chase them down along with three separate parts of Dominus in order to kill Dracula's soul once and for all. All three games are their own independent, concentrated examples of the best the Metroidvania genre has to offer before that word meant nothing anymore. You'll jump, run, backdash, fly, strike, and collect truckloads of rotten meat in very similar fashions across all three games. Luckily, none of them offer a moment of boredom all throughout as the next dangers, be it boss, batty, or trap, could always be around the corner. James, these games have been out on the DS for several years now. We don't need to tell people how good they are. They know already. Why is the Dominus Collection different? I thought you'd never ask. Let's start with the game's specific changes. First, Dawn of Sorrow. After defeating each boss in this game, a circle will appear on screen and you must draw the symbol that appears for a moment. In the original game, you had to use the touchscreen, which could be very inaccurate. If you fail this event, the boss will rehydrate and you must waste resources and time fighting it again. Fucking hated this as a kid. Luckily, Dominus Collection knew how awful this be and changed it to a quick time event. So... You're saying a quick time event is better than a touch screen. Did I absorb that correctly? Yes, you did. I stand by quick time events in this situation and this situation only. But the touch screen is right there. You can even press ZR to activate an on-screen cursor so you can draw the symbols yourself. You only have a limited time to draw the symbol, mistakes lead to refighting the bosses, and I really don't want to waste the pitiful healing items Castlevania games will never fix. Fine, but just be aware, quick time events will take this win, run with it, and begin infecting other games you love. It will be all your fault. I really don't think that'll happen. It will. Beyond that, I didn't find any other changes to Dawn of Sorrow that really jumped out at me. On to Portrait of Ruin. Right. This one never utilized the touchscreen to a degree I can remember, so there was no real need to replace it anywhere. I didn't play the alternate modes yet, so I'm unaware if those use it. So we're moving on to... Order of Ecclesia! It appears the touchscreen was only used for two very specific situations. The first is to place markers on maps in the game. The second is for Albus mode to teleport him around the screen. You could probably use the ZR cursor to easily navigate these things, but James just used the Switch handheld mode touchscreen. It doesn't change the game much. Now that we've covered the changes to the games individually... Hey, what about this haunted castle thing? And this haunted castle thing? Now that we've covered the changes to the games that matter, let's get to the best part of the Dominus Collection. 
the changes to all three games as a whole. First, all information is available on screen at once. Maps, enemy info, and the game itself are all visible on one screen. No need to scour the compendiums for enemies, which is a huge plus for Order of Ecclesia because enemy weaknesses have to be more carefully considered. You can even change the orientation and size by pressing ZL. It opens up a separate menu where you can change all kinds of things about your experience. You can even look through encyclopedias of moves, weapons, skills, items, and more for each game. They kind of went above and beyond to tell you everything you need to know about these. Now that Andy has finished talking about whatever, you wrote this script. We can get to the absolute best thing the Dominus Collection gave us. The thing that's been kind of ruining other gaming experiences for me lately. Something that should be added to anything with platforming, combat, or no hit achievements for bosses and boss rush modes. The Rewind feature. Can confirm, James utilized the Rewind feature to defeat every boss in Order of Ecclesia without taking a single hit, technically. While you can't rewind far, it is a significant change and can really reform your mindset around boss fights, platforming challenges, and those dungeons where you fight zombie reincarnations of older Vania heroes. The Rewind feature made these games for me. I remember playing these games for a first, second, and even third time and finding their challenges quite the reach for a casual player like me. Healing items are pitiful, bosses are sponges, fire and saw blades ruin your day. But the Rewind feature had me rethinking nearly everything in all three games. Suddenly those spikes can be seen, planned for, and avoided. Dracula can't grab me and suck my life out. No, I didn't just waste that super attack on something that missed. I made it through the entirety of the training tower in Order of Ecclesia without taking a hit. Technically. As long as the challenge is complete, the asterisk on it doesn't matter. I can confidently say I beat every boss and every platforming challenge, including the fire and electric rooms, without taking a single hit. Technically. I didn't have to waste my money on corn soups all the time. I was able to afford decent armor and weapons from the shop. I enjoyed all three of these games more than I ever could have on original hardware. I definitely look at the order I placed them, Order of Ecclesia, Dawn of Sorrow, Portrait of Ruin, very differently now. Sure, the originals still have a solid place in my heart, but the Dominus Collection really fixes a lot of the problems I had with them. Problems like what? Healing and challenge, obviously. Those have been diminished significantly. Sure, healing can be done away with for the most part, but all three games still hold a wide variety of challenges. Every boss no longer becomes a sponge, but a puzzle. And you get as many tries as you want to figure out how to defeat the Shadow Prick. Fucking hate this guy. Anything else? I didn't have to scour the menus for the exact enemy I needed info about, only to have to remember what I have to do because my memory is crap. Everything I need is right here. No, press select to change display. It's all just right here. That's incredible. Good, good. Finally, I was more easily able to utilize the doppelganger abilities in both Dawn and Order. Because of the rewind feature, I could go back, reassess my equipment, then try the moment I failed again. In the original games, I would usually use only one set of equipment and never switch to my other sets. Just equip, unequip, reequip, continue on. Rewinding really opened my brain to all three of these games. Unfortunately, everyone, he's becoming annoying about it. Every game he's played since Dominus has had a comment to the tune of, Ah, if only there was a rewind feature! And, If I could rewind, I wouldn't have fallen off that. And my personal favorite, I would have beaten you if I had rewind. I can't possibly sound that stupid. Yes, I can. Stop it! And maybe, when you finally work up the courage, you can actually play the two other games included in this... 25! Dollar package? What?! Yes. The Dominus Collection is a... 25! Dollar digital download and comes with five games. Three of them nostalgic reminders that Vania games were once the climax of the genre, second to none, and the influences can be felt strongly through the ripple effects it created in the industry. And two hard as balls something or others. All for... 25! Dippity Dollarinos. I had a wish these would come to the Switch, and for some reason the gods of fun, Parte, Squeena Butter, and Dan the Couch. Yes, those gods granted my wish with some extras. This collection is a must-own for any Castlevania fan, any Metroidvania enjoyer, anyone who likes a challenging game, or really anyone. These games are great and have been given the treatment to make them even better. This is modern game remaking done perfectly, and other remakes should definitely take notes. I can't wait to welcome this to my shelf of physical games in four years or so. On that note, thank you for watching our review of the Dominus Collection. While not a fan of these types of games myself, it's nice to see James happy. <sighs> and distracted, so I can do things without him constantly nearby. Oh no, I hear him coming. This hallway would be better with a rewind feature. Oh no, he must have beaten Albus mode. I thought I had more time. Rewind feature.